Hey guys, getting ready to go to work here. I feel like I have a little bit of energy and time to spare, so I want to go over Proverbs 27 right now. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Don't get too far ahead of ourselves. Okay. Um, let another man praise thee, and not thine own mouth a stranger and not thine own lips okay don't be prideful let uh you know if you're doing a good job whatever then let other people recognize that on their own don't think too highly of yourself a stone is heavy and the sand weighty but a fool's wrath is heavier than both than them both I don't know what it means, this, the sand, weighty. We, a stone is heavy, it's pretty easy to understand. The sand, weighty. Um, <clears throat> just sand, I guess, like sandbags, <laughs> like a bunch of sand together. Uh, a fool's wrath. So beware of a fool's wrath. <laughs> wrath is cruel, and anger is outrageous, but who is able to stand before envy? I think envy can lead to anger and wrath. And so it seems like envy is kind of the bigger enemy. Open rebuke is better than secret love. Okay, it's good to correct others. It's good to be corrected. We see that all the time in Proverbs. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. So sometimes our friends or family may correct us or say things that we need to hear that we might not appreciate, just like sometimes we need to take medicine that's bitter or whatever, but uh, that's a better thing than somebody who's trying to deceive you, trying to lead you on. trying to stab you in the back. The full soul loatheth an honeycomb. Again, he's talking about a honeycomb, or honey. That's mentioned quite a bit in Proverbs, at least a handful of times. But to the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. Solomon must have loved honey. I mean, who doesn't, I guess. Uh, loatheth and honeycomb. So what's the lesson in that verse? Um, I don't know. Verse 8, as a bird that wandereth from her nest, so is a man that wandereth from his place. Okay. Not such a good thing. Ointment and perfume rejoice the heart, so doth the sweetness of a man's friend by heartly counsel. So, again, it's good to be corrected or to have counsel anyway. Thine own friend and thy father's friend forsake not, neither go into thy brother's house in the day of calamity. Of thy calamity, for better is a neighbor that is near than a brother far off. Better is a neighbor that is near than a brother far off. So what does it mean, neither go into thy brother's house in the day of calamity, of thy calamity? So it says, don't, <laughs> don't forsake your friends. Hmm. 
does it mean go into the brother's house to do something wrong, like to steal from it or something, or... I don't know. <clears throat> Verse 11, My son, be wise, and make my heart glad, that I may answer him that reproaches me. A prudent man foreseeth the evil, and hideth himself, but the simple pass on, and are punished. So we need to pay attention. Take his garment, that is surety for a stranger, and take a pledge of him for a strange woman. For that is surety for a stranger. Yet I don't really know what this means. Does it mean like uh, if they come to your house, take their jacket like a polite host for a guest? Or does it mean if they owe you or something, then you take that? I don't know. Take a pledge of him for a strange woman. Is it, you know, take, is it kind of about, like, hospitality, listen to someone who's having strife with a woman or something, consider what they're going through, just like you would consider taking the garment for the stranger, I don't know. He that blesseth his friend with a loud voice, rising early in the morning, it shall be counted a curse to him. He that blesseth, blesseth his friend with a loud voice, rising early in the morning, it shall be counted a curse to him. <laughs> Don't wake up your friend loudly. That's an interesting verse. A continual dropping in a very rainy day and a contentious woman are alike. Not a good thing. Whosoever hideth her, hideth the wind. And the ointment of his right hand, which bereath itself. Hmm. Not sure what that means. Does that mean it can't be hidden? She can't be. Iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. That's pretty simple. Whoso keepeth the fig tree shall eat the fruit thereof, so he that waiteth on his master shall be honored. So do good job as a servant, as a laborer. As in water, as in water face answereth to face, so the heart of man to man. So I think that's talking about seeing your reflection in the water. And so whatever, you know, our heart is, whatever our desire is, that's kind of who we are, I guess. I don't know. Hell and destruction are never full, so the eyes of man are never satisfied. It's talking about our worldly, fleshly lusts. As the fining pot of, for silver and the furnace for gold, so is a man to his praise. Makes them better. Though thou shouldest bray a fool and a mortar among wheat with a pestle, yet not with his foolishness depart from him. Yet will not his foolishness depart from him. So bring a fool and a mortar among wheat and with pestle, does that mean when you kind of crush it down into tiny bits? Uh, so you can do that to a fool and they'll still be a fool. Some people you just got to kind of let go. Be thou diligent to know the state of thy flocks and look well to thy herds. You know, keep track, keep um, responsibility over everything that you own, basically. 
that kind of speaks to me how you know recently I, I've got I've wanted to have security cameras and I've wanted to have you know better locks and um, insurance on things and uh, it's like some of it can be like paranoia or maybe too much but some of it you know you have to know the state of your flocks and you have to look over the herds you have to be wise and so when these things are available and affordable and doable then you know it seems kind of foolish not to because things can happen in an instant it's unfortunate and if anybody's listening to this and maybe you're thinking about getting some kind of insurance or something then you know you should have and I've uh, had to upgrade the insurance on my vehicle before. I've had accidents, and I wasn't covered for things that I could have been covered for easily when I was already paying insurance. I could have just paid a little bit more each month, and it could have covered a lot more in expenses. But, um, you know, so I think that pretty much applies to that, you know. Keep track and of what you own. You know, be a good steward, as they say. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was going to say that when I was working at the gas station, I remember one night there was like a fire on the apartments, and there was a family that like lost everything. And I, I think it was like Blue Cross and Blue Shield that came and gave them money to stay in a hotel and stuff. And it was pretty sad. I don't think that they were covered by anything. They could have been. I could be wrong, I don't know, but uh, I'm thinking that they probably lost everything, and, uh, you know, it's not always something that happens all the time, but it does happen, fires happen, you know, bad weather, tornadoes, hurricanes, everything else, and uh, burglaries, you know, there's lots of crazy people out there high on mess, so... Look well to your herds, guys, for riches are not forever, and doth the crown endure to every generation. And, and doth the crown endure to every generation. So is he talking about leaving an inheritance, like keep track of what you have so you can give it down, because if you don't, then it can just disappear um, you know, I think there's also a spiritual application to this now that I was thinking about it, because I'm thinking about all the material, physical things, which I do think he is kind of talking about, but of course everything in the Bible kind of has a spiritual application too, so I guess, you know, for, I guess it would be for like a, a pastor or something for your flocks, but yeah, anyways, maybe that's going off on something else, but Verse 25, the hay appeareth, and the tender grass showeth itself, and the herbs of the mountains are gathered. The lambs are for thy clothing, the goats are for the price of the field. And thou shalt have goats' milk, enough for thy food, for thy household, and for the maintenance for thy maidens. So he's giving his uh, financial... <laughs> advice, I guess. And it's just, it's awesome how God's creation, you know, the wildlife and everything, animals and the green stuff that grows, plants, um, are all useful in many different ways for food, for clothing, etc., for building. That's basically where we get everything, you know, it's out of the ground. It's crazy. Even the computer that I'm on, it's like made of plastic and it's made of parts from trees and whatever else. Everything, you know, everything that I'm wearing. It's just, I don't know, we take it for granted, I think. We don't really realize that, how God's provided us everything. Anyway, <clears throat> that's it. So, thanks for that. We're almost through Proverbs, so then I can go by more verse through verse.
verse by verse. I'll probably just go to a verse here, a verse there, whatever, and jump around a lot, but... Alright guys, God bless.